In this video, I'm going to take you inside of another house flip. And this one happened to be a townhouse, right? I'm going to show you the after renovations and a little bit of some of the before so you see what it looked like when we first bought it. And further, I'm going to take you to the office and you'll see some of the numbers. Matter of fact, all of the numbers, purchase price, how we found it, how we financed it, the renovation costs, all that stuff right now. And I want you to meet my friend Tamika. She's a realtor. She's going to give us her take on the property as well. Thank you, Tamika. Yes. Thanks for having me, Chris. Yep. Absolutely. Let's do it. All right, class, it's Chris Haskins with TheRealEstateRoundup.com. My mission and ministry is to raise your financial literacy through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. So today, we bought another townhouse, right? I love townhouses. I don't know why people hate them. But I will tell you there are some ups and downs that we have to deal with. So we bought it, we fixed it all up, and we're getting ready to sell it. I'm going to take you inside. But the week before we start to list it, this is what happens a fire next door. Miss Tamika, tell us your opinion on, have you ever, first of all, have you ever seen a house <laughs> no. with a fire next door that tries to sell? No, I, honestly, I haven't, not at this point. This is the first and okay. uh, yeah, it's interesting. I, I don't think it's gonna have a problem selling still, but it's, it's gonna make things interesting for you. It will make it interesting. <laughs> so my, my, let me go ahead and show you inside of that. I'm gonna cut, because I walked through that a second ago. Take a look at what happened in there. Let me tell you about how you gotta have luck, huh? So I'm buying that house. We're selling that house next door, right? Our next door neighbor's house catches on fire. This is why you gotta be careful when you buy townhouses. My next door neighbor, okay, that is new sheathing. The house next door catches fire. Now, how would you like to see this when you pull on up to buy the house? Hey Taylor, hold up for a second. When you pull up to buy the house, this is what you see. And I'm right there, I'm next door. We're gonna go inside there, I'll show you. Oh man, just the luck of the draw in real estate. Is this not nasty or what? It's the smell that kills you. Oh damn, they took out the whole, the whole ceiling fell in. What? Come on over to the channel, I'll get you this later. This is a bad one. Got it? So you can see all the debris down here. You saw inside, the guy was here. He said he didn't, some type, he says what he thought was somebody put some hot coals into a trash can and it went up the wall and it's terrible. You can see the siding got melted, which he says he, see, he sees that all the time. Tamika, have you ever seen that before? I have not. I thought Smokey the Bear told everybody how to put their coals out. Yeah. I don't think it was putting it in the trash can. So when they show, when the person comes to buy this one, this is what they'll see when they show up. Hopefully it won't be a problem. We shall see. Thank you for Tamika and my daughter working with me today. Yes. Thanks, Till. Oh, my God. Look. It's just a bug, it ain't gonna kill you. <laughs> Feels better in here. Whew. AC works great. Yeah, it does, we're good here. <laughs> All right, so Taylor, get him a shot from over there as we walk in. So you come into this property, you go right into the great, would this, uh, Tamika, is this considered a great room or what is this? Uh, I would consider this the family room or living room slash eating kitchen. Family room slash eating kitchen. So mm -hmm. we have new LVP, which I do not like. Do you, what do you think about, le, le, uh, what is it, luxury vinyl plank? Yes. Do you like it, hate it, love it? Um, it's the thing right now, a lot of people like it. Okay. I kind of, I don't, I like it. You do like it? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's easy, and from my experience, it's easy to, it, you can mark it up. If you push something on it, it'll leave a mark and you're in trouble. Yeah, it's very forgiving. It is forgiving, you're right, you won't see the mark that bad. So we got, um, Ron always uses agreeable gray, as usual. So we got a new kitchen, and we'll flash the before of the living room, eating kitchen. And you can see here, new granite, new cabinets, 
Tamika, your opinion on the color of cabinets and what are, what are, go ahead. I think white as the new orange, as they say, gotcha. um, is very neutral. Um, if someone wants to come in and change colors, white would go with it. Got it. Soft clothes, I noticed. Oh yeah, the soft clothes. Everybody notices it. the soft clothes and it is a really good selling point. Soft clothes. Let me see if we got them on the drawer too. I like your sink too, the... Oh, the one sink. The, oh, the, the fixture. Yes. Yeah, this is something Ron does here too. Yeah. It's not the cheapest thing to do, but it pops. It only, it, it only costs a few more dollars. Yeah. But it, I kind of get that restaurant feel. Yeah, it's in the details. Yeah, the details. Yes. What is your opinion on one sink as opposed to divider? I Anything prefer personally one sink. Why is that? I don't use the other You only side. use the other side. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Grandma was back in the day. I don't know why we always had one side with dishes and whatever. Then there's no reason to have two and sinks anymore. That was before dishwashers, too. Now oh. we got dishwashers. Just throw it in the dishwasher. So, Taylor, real quick, give him a pan over there huh, from the corner so we can give them some of the before and after. Yep, give him a nice pan from there to there. Cool. So I want to give you a tip roundup, homies, and I want to ask Tamika, we never, ever, ever give end buyers a refrigerator at the beginning. We always let that be a bargaining tool. Tamika, you're showing more houses than me. Yeah, um, it is a bargaining tool. Um, Do you require that? Well, you're, if you represent buyers, so what, what, what's your? A lot of buyers do you want to do, where's the refrigerator? They ask. Yes. Okay. Do I have to bring my own refrigerator? And I always say everything is negotiable. Just say it, negotiable. Yeah. And so sometimes they say, it's okay, I have a refrigerator. I like mine's better. I'm gonna put it in here anyway. Mm -hmm. So people want to pick their refrigerator out. Gotcha. Yeah, I they negotiated do. They want, that They want way. the three door thing mm -hmm. and the digital. Yeah. And sometimes they just want maybe um, something to go towards buying a refrigerator so they can pick out. When you say something to go towards for my roundup homies that don't have any idea what you're talking about, <laughs> what do you mean? Um, a part of the negotiation. Um, money, you're talking about money. Yeah, money, right. yes. It's like, you know, I'm not gonna put a $5,000 fridge, you want a $5,000 fridge, we'll give you 3,000 or 2,000 or 2,500 and you put the difference and pick out the fridge that you gotcha. want. So. Huge tip y'all, saves you a ton of money. Do not, I used to be the guy that would give them a full appliance package, no more. Matter of fact, look, we didn't give them a microwave on this one. They got a, they got a hood with no light, right? Oh, is the light? Yeah. And honestly, that's We're fine. Short of it. That microwave will go right in that corner. They'll be right fine. Right here? Mm -hmm. Cool. But the kitchen is sweet. This is badass. <laughs> this allows you to negotiate. It saved, it saved us thousands of dollars over the years. So this is our half bath. I won't even go in there. Just give them a nice pan. In and out, down. There you go. Yeah, get the mirror too. We're done. Anything else you want to comment on downstairs, Tamika? Not here, but just in general. Just in general, I think it's a great area. As, um, when you walk in, I love walking into the fireplace. That's gonna be a great selling point. Gotcha. Natural wood. Um, LVP downstairs, I think is great. A lot of people have pets. Yep. It's very forgiving. Yep. And um, you got a great backyard out there. Take a look at that backyard. I don't even... I don't even really look at them, but that backyard is still too. important to this would be more of a, um, a first time home buyer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so absolutely. they're going to have kids and they're going to want a yard for them to play in. So yep. that's important. Fenced in is always a plus. You can absolutely. put your dog out there and pet and don't got to worry about them. Absolutely. You can pause it. Oh, hold on. Let me see. All right. Let's take a look upstairs, Mr. Tamika, if you don't mind. I'll, yes. You want to so. go first? Want me to go first? Um, you go first. So round up, let's cut to the office real quick before we go upstairs and let's go over the numbers together. So if you're taking in what we're putting out today, make sure you take a second, hit that subscribe button round up homies, like this content and share with anybody else you think that needs to understand how does this real estate investing thing work? How does it all put together? Hmm, I wonder. How do we make, what, what purchase price? How do we know what to offer? How do we know what it's worth, what's the reno? Now we're gonna go over all the numbers right now, okay? So, on this property flip, the ARV was $225,000, right? And don't forget, I do not get involved with the sales price. The ARV is the after repaired value. That's what we can sell it for. You see, I'm a high eye on the disc analysis. So I don't get involved, I let Ron 
deal with all the sales prices because I give away too much value. I'm always too low. So I'm the money guy. I'm the one that goes out <laughs> and finds the money for these deals. The purchase price was 130,000. And how do we get to purchase price? AKA the Mayo, the maximum allowable offer. That's going to be ARV, which is this number here, times 0.7 minus your reno, right? Generally speaking, this is kind of where hard money lenders and traditional lenders, the money people, this is the equation they use for properties between 100, uh, 200, 250, 300,000. So purchase price 100 and, uh, 130,000 and purchase price equals maximum allowable offer. They're both, they're interchangeable, right? Our reno was 22,000. That's going to be new kitchen. We reglazed that bathroom. As you'll see in a minute, we go into the, the, the other bathroom upstairs. We did, we reno, we reno the full bathroom downstairs, new flooring, new paint, <clears throat> carpet, all that stuff added up to 22,000. Now holding costs, which is something a lot of investors miss. You cannot miss this. This is the stuff that sinks people holding costs and cost to sell. So holding costs, taxes, insurance, utilities, interest on the money, you got to pay when you're borrowing money, right? So luckily we don't have to borrow all the money to do our deals now. But when you're starting out and you're coming, there through the, coming up through the ranks, you got to calculate interest on the money because you're borrowing, borrowing it all, right? So we paid roughly five grand. We're paying five grand because we haven't even sold this one yet. And the cost to sell on this one, generally speaking, for most investors, you got to pay 6% realtor fees and closing costs. Cost about 1,000, 1,500, two grand just to sell the property, right? Luckily, we're in a good market now. We don't have to pay the buyer's closing costs. We just have to pay ours. So if you if you have 6% realtor fees and you got closing costs to sell it, it's going to be 15K, right? Because that's 6% and plus just two grand to sell it. <clears throat> but, but we use something called a flat fee broker, flat fee agent. We pay her 500 bucks. So that slashes our costs to sell almost in half. So we pay eight grand to sell this thing, right? So our profit is going to be approximately $60,000. Now notice I always say, oh Lord approximate. This could swing usually minus, right? It very rarely swings positive, but uh, roughly $60,000. You see, you get into real estate, everything is five, five, 10, 15, 20. Nothing's down to the dollar because that's just, that, you just can't calculate this stuff. You don't know which way the market is going to go. And you don't, you don't know what these, uh, what the fees are going to add up to at the very end. So this is all the numbers here. And how do we find this deal? Y'all, I'm here to tell you, I have a geek squad that we do SEO, pay-per-click, Facebook ads, all that stuff. And if you're interested in that, I put a link to my personal marketing team. You cannot use them in the Hampton Roads area because that's gonna drive our dollars up. But how do we find these deals? Well, I'm here to tell you, my mentor says, Chris, if you can find a spouse online, you can find a house online, right? So you can get to my geek squad in the video description below if you need help with getting those leads in. All right, let's take a look upstairs. All right, so the first thing you notice here is the flooring. I don't even know what color it is. We got new carpet here throughout. Mm -hmm. Tamika, what are you seeing? New carpet in the bedroom. I still like it. When you I get out of the bed, I don't want to hit a cold floor. Gotcha. No one does. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder why we don't have carpet. <laughs> like this, not rugs. Well, we have hardwood. The problem, we live in a 60-year-old house. Mm -hmm. We have real hardwood. We don't even make it anymore. They, it's expensive. They do. It's too expensive. It's very expensive. Yeah. But I like hardwood floors, but everybody's different. Here's our full bathroom. We got a tub. Let me, that tub, we did something called a reglazing on it. All right, so that tub there is the original tub. But what we did was we just turned it white. It looks brand new. It will save you about $2,000 in labor costs because you don't have to rip out the tub. You don't have to bring a new tub. And you know, to be honest with you, this is called a one piece tub. If you notice all this is one piece, the only way you can do one piece tubs is when you're doing new construction because they won't fit through the doors. All right, so when you do a new tub, all you can do is put a base in and do a surround. And that can, it just gets expensive. You can't even put these in after the house is done, right? So uh, luxury vinyl plank. Anything that you comment here, Tamika? Tub surround, vanity? Come I, on in. I oh, am sure. like. Come on in, you go. Um, coming with you, you said this is a glaze over tub. Mm -hmm. I know you're doing your class where you're teaching yep. investors oh. how to do things. Yep. And uh, 
as a first time investor, I think that's important to know, hey, this tub is looks like new, but it's not new. Gotta and that's a way that you can cut um, on or help with some savings. Cost. Yeah, $2, absolutely. $2, Yep. And really, if you look at that door, you couldn't get a new tub in here. Anyway. You can't. Yeah, you can't. So, it had to be a base. Yeah. You know, but it still looks good. And I don't think people would mind. They wouldn't even know. They would probably think it's a new tub. Yep. Looks so brand that's new. that's a great way to cut costs, especially if you're, uh, it's your first time. Even there if it's not your first time, still a great way to cut costs. You got the vanity tail mm -hmm. and the sink and everything? Okay. So this is the primary bedroom. I don't know how Ron, I want to ask you, because when I walked in here, I looked at this small ass fan, <laughs> right? This is almost like a 36 inch here. Uh -huh. Tamika, do you have any opinion on this? Why the fan? My mother-in-law has little fans in her room. And uh, for this room though, it works, but a bigger fan would have been fine. You're good. You don't really care either way. No, not with a fan, as long as it as can turn realtor. on. As a realtor, no. As long as, as you get, yeah. And as uh, if I have buyers coming in, they'll just be happy. It's a ceiling fan in Fan, okay, you got it. <laughs> I don't know how wrong it is. Anyway, I guess he was coming up on the budget. I have a question. So I noticed that there's no lights in the other, I noticed there's no lights mm -hmm. in the other bedrooms, except for this one. And I don't remember the reason, but you said to not put lights in the bedrooms. And this one has a light and a fan. All right, when you say a light in the ceiling? Yeah. Okay, there's no light in the ceiling. You're coming in. As okay. as you want. So what happens is, back in the day when they built houses, 80s I would say, because I've done a lot of 80s houses, they were cutting back on their budget and they didn't put lights in the ceiling. All they did was put a, a light switch tied to the receptacle. So you can cut costs by not putting a light switch there. That's all. Yeah. They're just cutting costs. Is that what you see? And um, actually, they still do that. Really? But yeah. Um, the light and the fan is probably in that room because it's the primary bedroom. We, I think we might have put that in there, Tamika. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot, even now, a lot of the primary bedrooms will have a fixture or a fan. But the secondary bedrooms will not. They might be capped. Mm. Um, but they do not do that. And it's still connected to the light switch. A lot just of, saving money, right? I mean, yeah, that's it's just cutting costs. Yeah. This light thing's probably cost 150 bucks and to run a wire another 150, mm -hmm. I don't know. They might save three, 400 bucks on not running the line. They're just, cut, they're just cutting costs. Yeah, yeah. They're trying so, to make the homeowners comfy. Yeah, so it didn't require that's light. That's what the focus is. And then guess what? Kiddos, you get to turn on the light. You get whatever you want. Yeah, you know gotta put a fan here. I, I mean, this, a lamp here. Yeah, I know this was back in the day. Why not change it yourself like you did with the primary? Oh, why wouldn't I do it? Yeah, like why don't um, you just put a light in here yourself now? Well, um, same reason. Same reason. I'm not going to spend money on the kids. As long as the buyer is happy with the light, I'm good. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so unfortunately, the kid is, unfortunately, they're they secondary get, when it comes to spending money in the household. Get a cute door lamp or something. There you go. Make Set up. up. Yeah, you'll be good. <laughs> Anything else? No. All right. Okay, Roundup. Listen, <clears throat> make sure you hit that button to subscribe, like the content, and share with anybody else that you think needs to understand how to get involved with real estate. Don't be scared of townhouses. Tamika, any final words? Um, I think a townhouse is a great starter investment. Um, you guys did a great job. You guys always do a great job on your flips. Thanks. And um, I would I would buy this house. Yeah, it's yeah. nice. Yeah. If somebody wants to do business with you in the Hampton Roads, how do they get in touch with you? All right, so Facebook, uh, Instagram, The Real Estate Tutor, Tamika Henry. And uh, my telephone number is 757-343-4641. Call me for any uh, real estate questions that you have. <coughs> I get a lot of questions. The market is changing. I'm sure that you guys take that in consideration. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. It's, What's your specialty? My specialty is listings. Listings, gotcha. Yes, listings. And uh, I love first time home buyers also. Cool. Uh, as the real estate tutor, that's my tagline. I'm yeah. educating you through the process. Yeah. So that you'll know um, what to expect. Cool. So yeah, so I think um, I think townhomes are great, great first time home buyers. That's what I got first. Downsizing, yeah. doesn't matter, you know. So. You've always helped us. This lady's helped us every time. She's a grinder. She will gonna get you done. Anything yes. needs to get done. Wow. Thank yeah. you for helping us. I learned too. from the best. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> okay, guys. See you in the next one.